Hey folks, welcome to the final lesson in the ultimate guide to shutter speed. I'm David Molnar, your photography mentor, and in this lesson, we're gonna go super advanced and learn about some awesome shutter speed stuff when you combine it with flash. So in this advanced shutter speed lesson, I want to talk about mixing flash with ambient light. So what is ambient light? Ambient light is the available light in a given situation. So if it's sunny outside, that is ambient light. If there's lights on above in the room or inside the there's different lamps, that is ambient light. So what is flash? Flash is supplemental light. It's different than the available or ambient light. So if people try to tell you that your flash is ambient, they are wrong, all right? So when you try to mix flash with ambient light, there's a few things to keep in mind. So before we talk about ambient light in a specific room or situation, I wanna talk about what flash does in a pitch black dark room and how that relates to shutter speed. So I wanna look at an example image real quick. So this is an image of a band that I shot. They're called Big Daddy Weave, really awesome, great guys. I shot this picture at a 60th of a second, so pretty much a normal shutter speed, all right? Now this is a pitch black dark room. There is no other light in the room available whatsoever except for the flash that went off when I pushed the shutter release button, okay? Now this next image is the almost an identical shot. The only thing that changed really is just their heads moved a little bit, their smiles changed. Some guys aren't smiling, some guys that were smiling. All right, the only thing that's changed is basically just the positioning of the guys. But guess what? This image was taken for six seconds. Not a 60th, but six seconds. That is a lot longer than one sixth of a second, okay? So what's, what's going on here? Why do the guys look the exact same? Why does the exposure, the brightness on their faces look the exact same, whether I was shooting it for one sixth of a second or six seconds long? It is because shutter speed does not affect how much of the flash hits your subject. Let me say that again. Shutter speed does not affect how much light from the flash hits your subject, especially if we're talking about portraits, because a flash is there and gone so fast. It's there in approximately a 4,000th of a second, okay? And if I'm shooting at a 60th of a second, if that's this amount of time, or if I'm shooting at six seconds, the same amount of light would strike my subject with the flash, whether I'm shooting for this duration of time, or whether I'm shooting for this duration of time. Now let's go ahead and take a look at those images again. So this first image, we shot at a 60th of a second, which is a relatively quick amount of time, okay? Now this next image, we shot at six seconds, and the light looks the same on both sets of images, right? The light looks the exact same because the flash was there and gone in a 4,000th of a second and there was no ambient light in the pitch black dark room to change the effect of the flash, okay? So shutter speed will not change the exposure on your subject's face when you're talking about flash. So are you telling me, David, that shutter speed doesn't affect flash at all? No, that's not what I'm saying, okay? it does actually affect it. But the main things that affect the power of the flash or the brightness of your subject's face if you're using a flash to light your subjects is the power of the flash, your f-stop and your ISO. Shutter speed doesn't directly affect how much of this hits your subject's face because it's there and gone so fast, so long as you actually capture that. And that's where we need to talk about max sync speeds, okay? So basically, because the flash is there and gone so fast, you need to make sure that your flash and your camera can talk to each other and synchronize, okay, within the amount of time that you're taking the picture. So if you shoot too fast, your camera and your flash might not be able to sync up. And so that's why there is a max sync speed of 200th of a second with most cameras. Some cameras can go to a little bit faster at 250th of a second, but in general, 200th of a second is the maximum sync speed. So what that looks like is this. Take a look at this example. You see in this image, there is the black line. Okay, that is because we shot this image too fast. You're seeing part of the shutter 
caught in the frame and the camera and the flash was not able to sync up. So if we had shot at 200th of a second or slower, that uh, error would not have happened. Now something really cool that you can do with the combination of flash and shutter speed is drag the shutter and do some light painting or allow more ambient light to come into the room. Now in the example that I showed you before of the 60th of a second and the, and the six second exposure, there was no other light in the room. It was pitch black dark, we turn off all the lights. But something really cool happens when you leave the shutter speed open, when you leave the shutter open and you, you bring extra supplemental light into the equation. Take a look at this image right here. Now we have this basically very similar image uh, it's shot at six seconds long, but I had my assistants run through with these really cool lights and do these crazy light painting stuff because we're shooting at six seconds and we had some time to introduce some other light into the situation. So because I'm locked down on a tripod and because I'm shooting for six seconds, we could introduce this other light into the equation. So I used to use this effect all the time when I would shoot weddings, especially to capture motion and energy of the room in the reception. So what I would typically do is I would take my camera and I would shoot for a really long duration of time. I'd put my flash on like this, I'd probably angle it at the ceiling, especially if it was a white ceiling, the light could come up and bounce off of it. And um, you know, if I'm shooting at, let's say a 60th or a 100th of a second, you can hear the shutter kind of open and close pretty fast. But if I'm shooting at, let's say, a fifth of a second or a fourth, it kind of takes a little bit longer. So the flash goes off in the beginning of that exposure and then it's still taking the picture, the picture for a longer duration of time. So let's go ahead and take a look at this image. This is a, a musician, the singer is on stage. You know, I took the, the, took the picture and I'm probably leaving the shutter speed open for um, half of a second. And so when the flash fires and it kind of freezes just the subject for the most part, but then I kind of twist my camera and uh, you see all of that movement in the background and does some really cool things with the ambient light. Let's take a look at another very similar picture. Uh, this was actually on the dance floor, totally different wedding. I frozen the bride with the flash that went off in the beginning of the exposure, then twisted my camera. You see all the lights and all that stuff and it kind of creates this crazy effect. So for visual illustration, what you'd actually do is you'd hold your camera and you'd twist it while you're taking the image. A lot of times I would actually hold it straight, take the image and then twist it after the fact so that the frame starts out with the flash, frame square, and then the twisting effect, all the lights in the background start swirling behind. If you wanted all the movement to go sideways, you simply hold the, you know, the camera in place and then move the camera afterwards. And that can kind of create kind of a crazy fun effect in the background. So there's one other really cool effect that I wanna show you. All right, take a look at this image of Colton Dixon. So what you might notice is that the sky looks really dark and the image is just really moody. It actually kind of looks darker than is even possible for outside in the middle of the day. And that is because um, I've done the opposite of dragging the shutter and letting more light come in. I've actually um, stop down the shutter so that I'm shooting faster and kind of reduce some of the light in the background. I've reduced some of the ambient light. Now the flash is still hitting my subject so Colton is nice and bright and handsome, but the background looks darker because I'm shooting at the fastest shutter speed possible um, for the max sync speed. All right, well this concludes the ultimate guide to shutter speed. I'm so excited for you because you have learned how to avoid camera shake. You have learned to intentionally create crisp images by shooting a fast shutter speed. And you've also learned how to create and allow that motion blur, like a flowing waterfall or light trails or any type of motion that you want to allow your image to have by simply shooting at a long shutter speed and placing your camera locked down on a tripod. So you guys are already gonna go out and shoot better images. But some of y'all are thinking, I don't really know how to piece this all together. I've learned a lot about shutter speed. I know how to change the shutter speed on my camera. I know how to shoot in manual mode and shutter priority with shutter speed. But I don't really understand ISO and aperture and how that all works together with shutter speed. I can't quite take the images that I see in my head yet. Well, hey, you are in luck because I have a free web class that's called Show Your Camera Who's Boss. I wanna personally invite you to take this free web class and learn how to show your camera who's boss, bring all of this stuff together and finally take those images 
those gorgeous images that you see in your head. So if that sounds awesome to you, I want, to click, I want you to click the button below this video, sign up, pick a time that works for you, and I'd love to see you there. Well, hey, regardless of what you decide to do, thank you, thank you, thank you so much for allowing me to play a small part in your photography journey. I'm David Molnar, your photography mentor, and I'll see you soon.